Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. It is the truth. We do receive it written in our heart and written in our mind. We thank you for the revelation of it. We are hearers and doers of it, and we'll see the fruit of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated, if you would. We've been sharing with you a series of messages on the subject of the heart. We've talked about why the heart is so important. We talked about how we can have evil in our heart as well as have good things in our heart. And we must be those who are walking according to his ways to see him accomplish what he purposes. We know that God looks upon our heart and we know that he wants you to have a perfect heart before him. Proverbs 23, verse 26. My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. God wants you to give your heart unto the Lord. Put him first place. He is with you according to what is in your heart. Today, we're going to talk about the results of good and evil in your heart. We've talked about how we can have good in our heart and evil in our heart. So we're going to see the results of it. We begin in Numbers. In Numbers chapter 32. In Numbers chapter 32, verse 7. He said, Wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord hath given them? Or verse 9, For when they went up into the valley of Eshcol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel. They should not go into the land which the Lord had given them. If you let the enemy get to you in your heart and you get discouraged, which is a loss of courage, you will not possess the promises of God in your life. You are going to possess the promises of God through faith. As you go forth with strength and courage, overcome the enemies, conquer them, possess the promises in your life. Discouragement is a loss of courage. It will cause you to draw back. It will cause you not to fight the fight and conquer the enemies in your life. Those ones, they discouraged their heart. They didn't go and possess the land. They died out in the wilderness. If you allow discouragement to come in, you will not possess the promises of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, we see in verse 17, If thou shalt say in thine heart, These nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? The nations in the Old Testament are a type of the evil spirits that you and I are going to conquer in all areas of our life. And if you think that they are more than you, how are you ever going to get rid of them out of your life? You've got to know that the greater one is in you. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. He has given you authority over all the power of the enemy. And he wants you to use that authority and the weapons of warfare to conquer the enemy. If you believe these enemies are stronger than you, if you believe the devils are stronger, you're not going to see victory. You must be God inside minded and know that the greater one's in you. And he has said in his word that he will give you the victory. Because the Father will give you the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll not be able to possess him. So you must know who you are in Christ. He said, thou shalt not be afraid of them. And shall well remember what the Lord thy God unto Pharaoh did to Pharaoh unto all Egypt. You cannot be afraid of the devil. You must be in faith. You must believe the word of God. You remember what God did. God's the one who's conquered all of the enemies in the past. He defeated Pharaoh, and Pharaoh's a type of Satan. He defeated Satan. He conquered him. And he now has come to live on the inside of you. You can overcome in every situation. If you let any evil into your heart, if you have fear, or if you believe a lie, you will not be able to possess your promises and drive the enemies out of your life. God wants you to drive all the demons out of every area of your life. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 16, Deuteronomy 11, verse 16, the Bible says, Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. You and I must take heed to ourselves. If we don't take heed to ourselves, and we allow our heart to be deceived by evil things that would come in, we'll end up turning aside and we'll be serving something else. And how are we ever going to go in and be able to possess the land and see God's blessings come? No. So you've got to guard yourself. You cannot let yourself be deceived. The devil seeks to deceive. You must guard yourself. In Deuteronomy chapter 20, 
Verse 1. When you go out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. He goes on and says, It shall be when you come into the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people. He shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, you approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not, do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. You cannot let yourself be afraid or let your heart faint or tremble against the enemies. You are going to come against the enemies. You are going to cast them out. You are going to triumph over them. You are going to come against them. You cannot run away from them. You pursue after them. You are going to confront them and drive them out of every area of your life. What happened to these guys? It says down in verse 8, the officers will speak further to the people and say, What man is there that's fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return unto his house, lest his brethren's, brethren's heart faint as well as his heart. Otherwise, they weren't fit for the battle. If you have fear or you are faint-hearted, you are going to be giving place to the enemy. And it will cause you, of course, to not be able to get the victory, and you'll even affect others. That's why every one of us needs to make sure that we're in faith, and we are going forth. If you do not get rid of the fear and faint-heartedness, then how are you going to be successful in spiritual warfare? Now, if you have fear or faint-heartedness, you be on the attack and be casting them out. God is at work to deliver you and set you free. We also see in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy 28, we see in verse 15, the Bible says, It shall come to pass if you will not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. We know the blessings come upon us when we obey God's word. But if we don't obey God's word, then curses will come upon us, and they will be able to overtake us. And we see in verse 28, The Lord smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. God will these curses will come upon you because of walking in the ways of disobedience. We cannot walk in the ways of disobedience. And you'll end up serving your enemies. Verse 47, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, because you're doing the word and walking in his ways for the abundance of all things. What's going to happen? You're going to serve your enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and thirst and nakedness and want of all things. Put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until it destroyed thee. God expects us to choose the way of the Lord. He wants us to make his, put his word first place, be obedient to his commandments, and carry them out. Otherwise, we're going to end up serving our enemies. In Deuteronomy 29, you know, Jesus destroyed the works of the enemy. He does not want us to serve our enemies whatsoever. Deuteronomy 29, verse 18. Lest there be she should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations, lest there be among you a root that beareth gall or warm, wormwood. These are destructive things. He goes on and says, Come to pass when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imaginations, or the stubbornness this word means, of mine heart, to add drunkenness to thirst. Now you can't think that you're not going to have the effects of walking contrary to the word. Though verse 20 says, The Lord will not spare him. But then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man. And all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. Blot out his name from under heaven. That's quite, uh, that's the end for him. Why? Because if he turns away and serves anything other than the Lord, put the Lord first place, serve him, walk in his ways at all times in your life. We see another thing in Joshua chapter 14. In verse 7, this is Caleb's testimony. Four years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. The word was in his heart. You're to have the word in your heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. They didn't have the word in their heart anymore. They caused all the people to their heart to melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God, and he's the one that got his inheritance. If you will keep the word in your heart, 
and you will wholly follow the Lord by doing what He says, you will possess your inheritance. If you don't keep the word in your heart, your heart will not be strong. It will be like the other people, it will be melt, and you will not follow the way of the Lord, and you will not come into the promised land. <coughs> Over in 1 Samuel chapter 28, these are the results of evil in the heart, which we must not allow. 1 Samuel 28, verse 5. <coughs> Excuse me. When Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. Fear will take a hold of you, so you will not be able to believe God's word and put the power of God in operation. Everything's, your faith comes out of your heart. Your heart will not, well, your faith will not operate if you let fear get a hold of you. You resist all fear, and you walk in faith. These guys, could they defeat the enemies? Nope. It was only when David came on the scene, and he had already proved what God had done for him, and he knew what God would accomplish for him, and he's the one who slew the enemy and defeated the enemies. Saul, he saw, he, they got in fear. They could not get the victory over their enemies. We see also 2 Samuel chapter 6. This is talking about when Michael got a bad attitude against, this is Saul's daughter, against David when he came in and he was rejoicing because of the ark coming back to Jerusalem. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing with his Lord, and she despised him in her heart. She didn't like that. Oh, we should never think negative about someone praising and worshiping God with all their heart and ministering unto the Lord. And then, which is what he was doing. She thought he was just, you know, putting on a show, essentially. No. What happened for her? Destructive things will happen to a person if we will not walk in the ways of the Lord. Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. A curse came upon her. She was barren, a curse of barrenness. Well, God wants us to make sure that we are praising and worshiping God, and we don't despise anybody for anything that they're doing. We want to make sure that we are always having a good attitude. Otherwise, it will bring curses upon you. 1 Kings chapter 11. Speaking of Solomon, remember Solomon had the great wisdom that God gave him, and he was walking with the Lord. God appeared to him twice, but he made a big mistake. Second, or First Kings 11, 1 Kings 11.1, King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go in unto them, neither shall they come unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after other gods. We cannot have any yokes with anything that is not of the Lord. This case is talking about with women in relationships, but anything, anything of the world, anything that you yoke yourself that's not of the Lord is idolatrous. It makes, as it says, if, if you yoke yourself to the world, you're a spiritual adultery, and you are not a friend of God. You're actually become an enemy of Him. He turned away his heart after other gods. Idolatry got a hold of him. He clave into these in love. 700 wives, princes, 300 concubines, his wives turned away his heart came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect, but the Lord is God, as was the heart of David his father. And he went after all these evil ones, Ashtoreth, the goddess of Zidonians, and Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. He did evil in the sight of the Lord and didn't want go fully after the Lord. That's a big mistake. He built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that's before Jerusalem, and Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. This is all idolatrous. He did this for his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. Look what it says. The Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. We can't have that happening. In fact, look at the statement that was made in 1 Chronicles 28, verse 9. This is what God had said to Solomon. Thou Solomon, my son, know that thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart, with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the imagination of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he'll be found of thee. That's what he was doing. If thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Is he saved? 
According to this, it doesn't sound like it. Sound like he's finished, unless he somehow repented before the last of his days. He made a big, big mistake. We must never turn away from the Lord. We must put him first place. We cannot let anything ever come before the Lord and must walk in the ways of the Lord. Not yoke yourself to anything that will ever cause your heart to turn away. We see it in Second Chronicles chapter 12, verse 13. King Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem and reigned. For Rehoboam was one and forty years old when he began to reign and reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem. The city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there, his mother's name was Nama, Animus. He did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. That brings another important point. If you don't prepare your heart to seek the Lord, you will end up doing evil. Many people just, just go around with whatever happens. They just flow with whatever wind blows. No, you need to prepare your heart that you're going to seek the Lord. You're going to do the things that God wants. Then you will not do evil. Why should we do evil if we set the word of God first place and we set ourselves and prepare our heart that we're going to seek him and we're going to walk in the ways of the Lord? He did evil because he made a big mistake. Second Chronicles 26. We must not have pride in our heart. It will bring destruction. Second Chronicles 26, 16, when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. Don't ever let pride get into your heart. You must have humility. He transgressed against the Lord as God went in the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. He decided he was going to do what he wanted. It's the king who decided he was going to all act like a priest, which they couldn't be doing both. What a big mistake. If you get your heart lifted up, pride will always precede a fall. and You will have destruction in your life. We must maintain humility at all times. Look what happened here in 2 Chronicles 32, speaking about Hezekiah. Verse 25, Hezekiah is one who did have a perfect heart at times and walked with the Lord. But then it says here in verse 25, Hezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done with him, for his heart was lifted up. He got in pride. Therefore was wrath upon him. God's wrath will come upon him, judgment, and upon Judah and Jerusalem. Notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart. If you do make a mistake, immediately confess that sin, repent of it, turn away from it, then both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so the wrath of the Lord came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah. God will forgive us, of course, in the New Testament and cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we will turn and repent, and then we will see that, in this case, no wrath would come upon him. Another thing, we must guard our heart because your heart must be perfect and clean before the Lord if you're going to see your prayers get answered. Psalm 66, verse 18. Look what it says, quite a statement. If I regard iniquity in my heart, any kind of wickedness, any kind of evil, the Lord will not hear me. He's not going to hear your prayers. It doesn't matter how accurate of a prayer you pray. It doesn't matter what your situation is. We must have a heart that is right before the Lord. Do not let any kind of iniquity or wickedness that's in your heart in any way, which would be any kind of sin, you must guard your heart. In Psalms 81, we see in verse 11, He said, My people would not hearken to my voice. Israel would none of me. You and I are expected to obey God's word and follow His ways with a willing heart, willing mind, obedient to Him. So I gave them up to their own hearts, lust, and they walked on their own counsels. You know, God can't make you do things. He's not going to make you. He set before us life and death, blessing and cursing. He told us to choose life. He's given us a free will. He gave them up to their own hearts, lusts, and they walked in their own counsels. What's going to happen then if they walk in the wrong ways? Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. He's lamenting. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries, but instead their adversaries overtook them and conquered them because they did not obey God. If you obey God, he, you have the promise that He will subdue your enemies underfoot, and He will turn His hand against your adversaries. He will conquer them. He will give you victory. You can have victory in every situation if you walk in the ways of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 12, 
Verse 25, these are all the evil things, the results of evil things. These are things we must eliminate. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, makes it bow down, otherwise it gets depressed. You can't allow heaviness, and this really means anxiety or anxious care. That's what this word actually means if you notice it below in the lower window. Any kind of anxiety or care which causes a heaviness in your heart. It'll cause you to get depressed. It's going to full pull you down. You need to guard your heart. Keep a joyful heart through the Word of God. Keep a heart that's got your eye, uh, maintain peace when you keep your eyes upon the Lord and be doing the things that He wants you to do. You cast all your cares upon the Lord and be anxious for nothing, the Bible says. Pray the Word of God and know that God will bring forth what He purposes. You also cannot be a backslider in heart. There are Christians who are backsliders in heart because they aren't, don't do things correctly from their heart. They haven't got the word in their heart. In fact, some just go through the motions. No, that, you're not going to get anywhere when you do that. <coughs> Proverbs 14, 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. What happens when he walks in his own ways? It's going to lead to destruction. He won't see God's blessing. We are to live unto him and walk in his ways. When you walk in his ways, then you will be walking uprightly and you'll see the blessings. But notice, anybody who is filled with their own ways, what are they? They're actually a backslider in heart. They may not think they are, but they are. So only in the measure you're walking in God's ways is what shows that you have a heart that is right with the Lord. Proverbs 18, verse 12. Before destruction, the heart is man is haughty. We saw this before, being proudful. But before honor is humility. You want God to honor you? You must have humility. If you get a prideful heart, you are going to see destruction come your way. Proverbs 23, these are all things we must eliminate, pride. Pride's what caused the devil to fall, remember? You must guard yourself. Proverbs 23, verse 17, let not thine heart envy sinners. Don't get your eyes on what sinners have or don't have, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. For surely there's an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Don't get your eyes on what's happening in somebody else's life, or sinners, or anybody. You get your eyes on what the Lord is doing. Your expectation will not be cut off as you walk in the ways of the Lord. God will bring forth His promises to you. So, do not get your eyes on other people. Say, why is God, you know, why do these people have these uh, good things happening for them? A lot of people are sinners out there. It may not seem like bad things are happening, but the devil's got control of them, remember, and they're on their way to hell. And also, you don't know what all's going on in their life. It may look like things are right. No, everybody's going to get according to what's really, truly in their heart. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 14. Happy is the man that feareth always, as the fear of the Lord. But he that hardens his heart shall fall into mischief. This means, this word actually mischief, when you look it up in other lexicons, it refers to calamities and troubles. Evil things are going to happen. If you harden your heart, you're going to have calamities. You're going to have troubles. Why would we harden our heart? By not obeying the word. Anytime we don't obey God's word, remember that's sin and that causes a hardening of our heart. This is why obedience is absolutely essential. As you obey the word, then you'll see blessings. If not, then you will see calamities and troubles will come. In Proverbs 28, 25, He that's of a proud heart stirs up strife. Do you fall into strife? That's pride. Pride will cause you to stir up strife. You fall into it because you're not doing what God wants you to do. You're having your own attitudes and walking in your own ways and getting into arguments with people. Now, we don't want to allow ourselves to get into any kind of strife. Get rid of the pride out of your life. We see another scripture talking about pride. It's over in Obadiah. Verse 3, look what pride will do. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. It will bring deception to you. You must not have pride. You must maintain humility. Otherwise, you will be see the e devil easily deceive you. Another thing we see over in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. 
I say unto whosoever looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery where they're already in his heart. That shows you that it's not just the act. You can commit it in your heart by lusting in your heart. We must make sure that we don't walk in any of these ways and we guard our heart, make sure that our heart is pure before the Lord. Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Many people can have the talk, but it comes down to, do you have the walk? And what, how do we know? God says, I know you by your fruit and by your works. That shows that you're following the way of the Lord. We can't have one be with those a heart is far from him whatsoever. He's looking on your heart, remember, not just you going through the motions. It's what's on the intents and the thoughts of your heart, the real motivation in your life. Verse 18, those things that proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. They defile the man. For out of the heart proceeds the evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies, these things. That's what causes a person to be defiled. These are the things that defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. It's not what in the natural and what comes in. It's what's on the inside of you. That's, that's where it's coming from of why a person does the evil things they do. Matthew chapter 18, verse 35. If you will not forgive from the heart, you will be turned over to the tormentors. It's mandatory to forgive. It doesn't matter what people have done to you. You choose to forgive in obedience to the word. It doesn't matter whether, what their actions are. Matthew 18, 35. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. And what's he talking about? This is where the guy got delivered to the tormentors because he wouldn't forgive the small debt after he was forgiven the big debt by his Lord. You will be turned over to the spiritual tormentors, which are the evil spirits, if you do not have forgiveness. You must forgive. Do not allow unforgiveness in your heart whatsoever. We see another thing over in Mark chapter 8. So much to have, important to have our heart not hardened. Remember, anytime you disobey and don't obey, you harden your heart. That's important to realize. Mark 8, 17. When Jesus knew it, he said to him, Why reason you? Why have you no bread? Perceive you not yet? Neither understand. Have you your heart yet hardened? Otherwise, if your heart's hardened, you can't perceive things. You won't get spiritual understanding. You'll just be, you know, operating in the flesh, operating according to a carnal mind, being deceived. You won't perceive things properly. You won't have understanding. You'll be reasoning in your mind. You'll be making all kinds of mistakes. You and I must not let our heart get hardened. Also, you want to move a mountain or a hindrance or a problem out of your way? You must be in faith and believe. You cannot have doubt in your heart. Mark eleven twenty three. I say unto whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. We cannot doubt. No doubt. You're going to, you believe. Any doubt is the devil attacking your mind. Anything that tries to get you to waver or wonder or question, maybe he's not going to do something for me. God won't perform it. He's a liar. He's trying to deceive you. Do not listen to him. Doubt is coming from the devil. It will stop you from seeing your, the mountain be removed. Mark 16. Again, hardness of heart is addressed many times. Mark 16, 14. After he appeared unto the leaven as they sat at meat, he abraded them for their unbelief and hardness of heart. You don't believe? They had unbelief and hardness of heart? Because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. They wouldn't believe their testimony of saying that Jesus was raised from the dead. They hardened themselves. If you're in unbelief, you harden yourself. We not, cannot allow that whatsoever. Remember what it says, similar to this, in Hebrews chapter 3, over in verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Many people don't realize how the enemy 
easily hardens people's heart. Anytime you disobey, anytime you don't do what he says, you get in unbelief, any kind of areas of sin will cause a hardening of your heart and it will stop God's blessings from coming your way. Luke chapter 16. In Luke chapter 16, again, this is all the results of evil. Verse 14, the Pharisees who also were covetous, they were greedy for gain, covetous. All they loved money and they want, loved possessions and loved all these things. Heard all these things and they derided him. He said, you are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. They were all after covetousness and money and all these things. They were trying to justify themselves for all their actions before men, pride. God knew their heart. The things that they were seeking after were an abomination to God. We're to seek the things above, not the things on the earth. God will provide your needs, but you're not after possessions and after things. You are after the, the riches of Christ, which is all of His things that He accomplishes in your life. We also see in Luke 21, your heart will be affected if you let cares, worries, anxieties, or also any kind of intoxication in your life. Luke 21, 34, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your heart be overcharged or weighed down, pulled down, with surfeiting. That's someone who's drunk to excess of alcohol and he has a headache, a hangover. Or intoxication, this means. That's what the word means, literally, methe, intoxication. And cares of this life, cares, anxiety, will also affect your heart. That's why anything that is sin is going to affect your heart. That's what's important. And God's looking on your heart, and that's well, how, where faith is. Many people don't operate in faith because they have evil that has come into their heart. They have not guarded their heart. Here we see another place. That's why your heart is so important. That's the inner man on the inside, remember. Luke 24, 25, he said to them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Don't be slow to believe God's word. God's word's the truth. Believe it. Exactly what he says. And don't ever draw back from believe it. They were slow to believe the word of God. You also got to be ready to resist the devil. Because the devil can put things into your heart. Look what happened here in John chapter 13, verse 2. The supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. He let the devil come into his heart through the thoughts that he brought to him. And you let the devil in through your mind or any of your, any of your members, it'll get into your heart. And here he put this in his heart for him to betray him. You must resist the devil, resist all temptation, strive against sin, fight against sin. Do not let anything come into your heart that would cause you to do any evil type of things at all. In fact, this is quite a statement. Acts chapter 5. Look what happened to Ananias. Ananias sold a possession and he kept back part of the price. Otherwise, he didn't want to give it all, even though apparently he had said he was going to give it all. His wife also being privy to it, uh, they had plotted this themselves, and brought a certain part, ah, like they were giving it all, and, but they were holding the other part back, laid at the apostles' feet. You're not going to get away with that. Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and keep back part of the price of the land? God had revealed that to Peter. While it was remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? To try to deceive. Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And look what happened, the judgment that came. Hearing these words, he fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all, all them that heard these things. He died. A judgment of death came upon him. We cannot allow any evil things to come into us. We see in Acts chapter 7, down in verse 39. Notice what it says here. To whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt. Remember they were always wanting to go back to Egypt? Egypt is a type of the world. 
That's a person who will not continue to follow God and trust Him, but they always want to go back into trusting the world, the natural, they look in the natural realm and the world's ways to do things. <laughs> You're going to walk in the ways of the Spirit, not in the ways of the world. In their hearts, they turned back into Egypt. They wouldn't obey. No. You see, many people, the last thing a lot of times they try, they'll try the world's way on everything before they come to God for their, to meet their needs and, and provide for them and, and bring forth their, their promises in their life. No. They rejected the Word of God and they made a big mistake. Verse 51. You stiff-necked at someone who's stubborn, headstrong, obstinate, and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so did ye. We can't resist the Holy Spirit and think we're going to be blessed. The enemy will have place. Of course, this is what the devil does. He wants you to yield to evil things, stubbornness, headstrong, obstinate, not yield to the Lord. No, we need to choose the way of the Lord. Romans chapter 1. Look what happened to these guys. And this is certainly tells you about why we have problems today. Romans 1.21 because that when they knew God, these are people that knew God, but glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations or their thinking, and their foolish heart was darkened. Now, your heart isn't always necessarily going to have light in it if you don't follow the Lord and seek after Him. In this case, they quit glorifying Him as God. They quit being thankful. That's a mistake. Now their heart got darkened. They were professing themselves to be wise. They get deceived, see? The heart gets hardened and deceived, and they become fools. And then they began to change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man, the birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. You wonder, how could they do such things? Because their heart got darkened. God gave them up to the uncleanness through the lust of their hearts and dishonor their own bodies between themselves. They changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator. That's a mistake. We're to serve God, not ourselves. We live unto Him, not living unto ourselves to do what we want. And what they do? They got into homosexuality because they rejected God. And they ended up walking in all kinds of evil ways. It goes on down here. They didn't like to retain God in their knowledge. Oh, we need to be hearing the Word continually. God gave them to a reprobate mind to do those things that are convenient, not convenient. And they get filled with all these evil things, every kind of evil thing you can think of. Unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, all these evil things that it goes on and talks about. These people, all because they quit glorifying God and were not thankful, didn't keep their eyes on Him anymore. That is a great mistake. That's why we cannot have any evil. You must guard your heart. Romans 2.5, after the hardness, again, we see this continually brought up in the New Testament. Hardness and impenitent, that means unrepented heart. They really haven't repented in their heart. Treasure up, which means really to store up, heap up, or gather up, or store up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and the revelation, the righteous judgment of God. Hardness of heart will cause it to happen. Again, sin causes a hardness of heart. This is why you, we continually talk to you about conquering sin. Because if you don't conquer sin in your life, you will have a hard heart. You will be treasuring up and storing up wrath because of an unrepentant heart, because of a hardness. We cannot allow that to happen. He will render every man according to his deeds. God is a just God. Everybody is going to get according to their works. We walk in the right ways, then great things will happen. We'll be blessed. The ones who can patient, continuous, and well-doing, which is when we're doing the Word, will be seeking for glory, honor, and immortality, eternal life. That's what we want. But, he says in verse 8, those that are contentious, don't let yourself be contentious. Do not obey the truth. That's disobedient to the Word. But obey unrighteousness. What happens to them? Indignation, wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man. Calamities. Anguish really means calamities and extreme infliction. <laughs> a lot of trouble. You see, there's a cause for things why they happen. The curse causeless does not come. You've got to understand, things just don't happen. 
well, this is the way things must happen. No, there is a reason for everything. And if our heart is not right, we could be hindering God's blessings from coming forth in our life. Look at another place. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them, and because of the blindness, the word blindness really means a hard, calloused heart. The blindness or the, call the hardness, Young's brings it out more what it means, a callous or a hardness of heart. So what happens? You've got a hard heart, your understanding's darkened. You're not going to have spiritual understanding. You'll be alienated from the life of God because of the lack of knowledge that's in them because their heart gets blinded because of the hardness of heart. It hinders us from seeing God's blessings in our life. Another thing, you also have to watch your mouth. Your mouth is very important. James 1.26, if any among, man among you seems to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, the man's religion is vain or profitless, devoid of force, truth, success, result, useless of no purpose, is what this word means. Otherwise, you could be going through your entire Christian life and going nowhere because your mouth, your mouth is a releaser of things. You speak forth what God wants. Make sure that you only speak the things that are right because, see, when you speak words with your tongue, it not only goes out to others, but it's also going into your heart. You hear it on the inside of you. So you're actually sowing things into your heart by the words that you speak. That's why you keep speaking good things and you keep sowing good things into your heart at all times. Don't be speaking the circumstance. Don't be speaking the negatives. Don't be speaking all these things that are happening. How's that going to help you? That's not going to help you. You're actually sowing evil things into your heart. You must guard yourself. Otherwise, you deceive your own heart. James chapter 3, over in verse 14. If you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descends not from above. It's not coming from God. It's earthly, sensual, and devilish. It's coming from the devil operating in the earth. Where envying and strife is, what happens? There's confusion. The word confusion means instability and a state of disorder, things being dis disturbance. People get into these things, they have all kinds of mental problems. Instability in their life, state of disorder, everything's out of order. See, things just don't happen. There's a reason. And every evil work. And the devil can have a heyday in your life if you get place this. Don't let yourself get into arguments, contention, strife, envying, any of these kind of sinful things. It opens the door for the enemy. What does God want? He wants us to have a pure heart. Clean heart. James 4.8 Draw nigh to God, He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify, this means to make pure, make cleansed, your hearts, ye double-minded. Or this refers to really a two-souled person. He's been affected because of all this negative he's got in his mind. He's thinking one way one minute. He's thinking another way another minute. He's re uh, responding to emotions one minute, and he's responding according to the word another minute. He's two-souled. He's not consistent. He's all over the place. God wants you to govern your mind and take your thoughts captive, govern the soulish realm. You cannot let the enemy have place. Otherwise, you will not have a pure heart. And God is looking upon your heart and wants to bring great blessings. Now that we've seen all the negative things, let's look at the good things, the effects of a right heart. What will God do for those who have a right heart before Him? He will bring blessings. Deuteronomy 5, 29. Oh, that there was such a heart in them that they would fear me, one who has the fear of the Lord. They'd keep my commandments always. They're walking in the word. That it might be well with them and with their children forever. You will be blessed. It will be good for you if you will have the fear of the Lord and you will keep the commandments of the Lord. We see over in 1 Samuel, chapter 13, verse 14. Now the kingdom shall not continue. This is because of Saul's disobedience. He lost his rule. You won't rule and reign if you're in disobedience. 
But the Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over the people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. God seeks a person who's after his own heart, and he will raise him up. And he will be the one who is going to see God's blessing, and he will rule and reign. If your heart is right before the Lord, you are going to rule and reign. God will be with you, and he will manifest himself. In fact, we see time and time again in the Old Testament, 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 4. But the Lord may continue his word which he spake unto me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart, with all their soul, there shall not fail thee a man on the throne of Israel. They would continue to have the rule and the reign. They would rule over their enemies instead of the enemies coming and ruling over them. The point is this, if you will take heed and walk in line with the word with all of your heart and do what the word says, you are going to continually be in that state of ruling and reigning over your enemies. If not, oh, you'll let the enemies end up ruling and reigning over you. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 23. He said, Lord God of Israel, there's no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who keeps covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. If you have the walk, which is step by step by step, remember, step by step walk, God will keep his covenant, he'll bring his promises to pass, and he'll keep his mercy. His mercy is the love of God in action. His mercy is his healing, his deliverance. His mercies are new every morning. That's the blessings of God that will come upon you if you will do the things that he wants you to do. We see over in 2 Kings chapter 20. See, God wants to bring great blessings upon us. Verse 1, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. The prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. What does he do? He turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. That was his testimony in his life. And have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. It came to pass before Isaiah had gone out in the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah the captain of my people. Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I've heard thy prayer. I've seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day you'll go up into the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days 15 years. You've got 15 more years of life because of the fact that he had walked before the Lord and done what was right in his sight, and he had a perfect heart before the Lord. And he said, I'll deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. They'd get delivered from their enemies, and I'll defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake because of the fact that he walked before him with truth and a perfect heart. Your consistent walk is important to God. Your heart maintaining a perfect heart, doing what is good in his sight, God will take notice of that. We also see over in Second Chronicles, if you will walk in the ways of the Lord, you will see the enemies put underfoot and you will have rest. 2 Chronicles 15, verse 12. They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart, with all their soul. You've actually entered into that the day you got born again, because now you're to seek after the Lord, learn his ways, walk after the word of the new covenant. Whosoever would not seek the Lord of God of Israel will be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. You can't enter into the new covenant and then not seek after the ways of the word and walk in line with the word and think you're going to get blessed. If you walk according to the ways of, of sin and the ways of the world, what's going to happen? You're going to have curses coming upon you, and you will see death. It's the same principle. They swear unto the Lord with loud voice, shoutings with trumpets and cornets, otherwise that they were going to walk in line with this covenant. All Judah rejoiced at the oath, and they had sworn with all their hearts, sought him with their whole heart, whole desire, and he was found to them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. You see it time and time again in the Old Testament where they got rest from their enemies because the enemies were smitten and they were protected. God wants us to come to that place. The enemies are smitten in our life. They're underfoot. We have rest. We are blessed. We are protected. And we see God's blessings. 
Notice what they did. They sought him with their whole desire. He was found to them. And obviously they walked in the ways of the Lord and did what he told them to do. And he gave them rest round about. Look at the promise here in chapter 16, verse 9. For one who has a heart perfect towards God, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. A perfect heart is what God wants for every single one of us, and we can have a perfect heart as we walk in the ways of the Lord. Now, notice what he'll do. He'll show himself strong on your behalf. In fact, he's looking to show himself strong on behalf of people. And this is the case with Asa, who had done, not done what God told him to do. He did not rely on the Lord. Here and thou hast done foolishly, therefore from hence they'll have wars. That means if you don't rely on the Lord, you're going to have all kinds of attacks coming against you. If you do rely on the Lord, you're, you're going to drive out the enemies. You're going to get to the place of being free. God will show himself strong on your behalf, and you will be delivered. You'll be bought, brought into rest and peace and healed and delivered in vic victory, in a victorious state. That's what he has for every one of us. We also see 2 Chronicles 31. If you do things with all your heart, God will prosper your life. 2 Chronicles 31, 21. In every work that he began in the service of the house of God and the law and the commandments to seek his God, he did it with all his heart and he prospered. God will prosper you. He will bless you. You will see success because God will prosper the work of your hands when you do the things that God wants you to do. But you must follow the way of the Lord. You must also maintain a tender heart before you at all times. Again, guard your heart. Remember, the devil's trying to get into your heart so he can carry out his destructive work. 2 Chronicles 34, 27, Because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before God, when thou heardest his words against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, and humbled thyself before me, and didst rend thy clothes and weep, weep before me, I've even heard thee also, saith the Lord. He heard his prayer because he had a heart that was tender, he heard the things that were pronounced. He sought after God, and he prayed, and God heard his prayer. God will hear your prayer if you will have a tender heart, a humble heart before the Lord. That's very important. And he'll deliver you from things. I'll gather thee thy fathers. You'll be gathered to thy grave in peace. Neither shall thy eyes see all the evil that I'll bring upon this place. See, a, a judgment was pronounced upon them, but because of what he did, he would not see it in his life at all. It would be in a further generation. Otherwise, he got delivered from the evil. He would not see the evil that would be brought upon the place and upon all the inhabitants. So, this is what God wants. You won't see evil, and you'll see God manifest himself to deliver you if you have a tender, humble heart. Nehemiah, chapter 9. Look what it says about Abram. Verse 7, Thou art the Lord thy God, who didst choose Abram, brought him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees, gave him the name, of the, the name Abraham, and found his heart faithful before thee, and made a covenant with him. Why did he get chosen? Because he had a faithful heart, and he made a covenant with him. God is looking for those that are faithful. Faithfulness precedes promotion. It's true in the natural. It's true with God. As he sees faithfulness in your life, that means consistency in walking the ways of the Lord. Then he will promote you and he will bring his blessings upon you. He will also defend you if you have a heart that's right before him. Psalm 7, verse 10. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. You got a right heart, upright in heart. God will come to save you, to deliver you, to bring you victory, to bring you out of whatever attacks come against you. He's your defense. He'll defend you against the enemy's attacks, whatever it might be. God wants to defend us, of course, and give us the victory. But the key will be what's in your heart. If you're upright in heart, God will come on the scene and set, deliver you from the attacks that come against you. Psalms 24, verse 3. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Otherwise, who's going up? Who's going up to heaven? He that has clean hands and a pure heart is not lifted up his soul in the vanity nor sworn deceitfully. 
clean hands, a pure, clear, clean heart. That's what God's looking on. That's what counts on the inside of us. He goes on and says in verse 5, He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. If you've got a clean heart, pure heart, clean, you're going to be declared righteous. And the righteous are the ones that go on to eternal life. And you'll receive blessing from the Lord. God's blessings will come on those, and they'll be the ones that will be able to go up to heaven, as it says, ascend to the holy hill. Psalms 37, verse 31. The law of God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. I mean, you won't, you won't be walking in the wrong path. You'll be walking the right path. When the law of God's in your heart and you're doing the word, remember out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth will speak. It'll give you the drive, the desires, so you'll do what God says. Then you won't make mistakes. Your steps will not slide. You will not go off track and not walk in the ways of the Lord. Also, as the word's in your heart, you will delight to do everything that God wants you to do. Psalms 40, verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. If the word's in your heart, you will delight. You will want to do the things of God. You'll be excited about it. You'll take pleasure in it. You'll be pleased to do it. God won't have to be prodding you or trying to get you to do things. No, because you will have a heart that's right before him. Psalms 112, verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. That's the kind of heart you're to have. His heart's established. Nothing causes it to waver. He shall not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. Otherwise, you're going to continue to conquer those enemies, smite those enemies, pursue them until they're put underfoot, speak forth the promises and take hold of victory. All the enemies will be smitten under your foot. Why? Because you're not afraid of any kind of negative evil reports. You're going to be fixed, trusting in the Lord, your heart, established on the Word, and you are going to see God bring forth victory for you in your life. Another thing we see, if when the Word of God's in your heart, you won't be walking in sin. Remember, sin has no dominion over us, and we're not to be yielding to sin any longer. Psalms 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. See, it gives you the motivation. It gives you desires. It will come up to you and show you what to do. In each case, it'll be what your desires are. You will not be walking in the ways of sin. Also, a great promise. If you have a heart that's right before God and you're trusting in Him, God will direct your paths. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways. He shall direct your paths. You have the promise that God will direct your paths, the steps that you walk in, if you will meet these conditions, including trusting in the Lord with all of your heart. Chapter 14, verse 30. This is what will happen for the one who has a healed heart, a sound, which really means a healed heart, one that's been hurt, hurt, healed, one that's been cured. Mm -hmm. That's why you get all the garbage out of your heart. Yeah. Get all this uncleanness out. You get rid, rid of it all. A healed heart is the life of the flesh. But if you have envy, remember, that's evil stuff, it'll cause rottenness of the bones. Otherwise, what's in your heart is going to affect your physical body. It'll bring the life of the flesh of the body. Or it'll cause a rottenness to your bones. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the reason why people have arthritis and degenerate things and all kinds of evil stuff going on on their bones is there's been sin that they haven't dealt with in their heart. Got to get it all out. Proverbs 15, verse 13. He also wants you to have a rejoicing heart, a merry heart. A merry heart, a joyful, glad heart makes a cheerful countenance. But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. You're all wounded, brokenhearted. You're going to be all broken up. No, we want to get all that out. We're to have a merry heart. And remember, where do you get this joy from your heart? It has nothing to do with circumstances. It has to do with the word in you. 
Look what it says in Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of mine heart. You need joy and rejoicing in your heart. It comes from the word in you. If you don't have the word in you, then no wonder you don't have the joy and rejoicing in your heart. If the devil's been taking the word out of your heart, now you're, you've got sorrow, sadness, you know, upset, you know, depression, all these negative things. That shouldn't be happening for us. Proverbs 15, 15. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart, a good heart, here this means, he has a continual feast. You're going to have blessings. God's blessings are going to come upon you. A continual feast of blessings coming from the Lord. In fact, it'll contribute also towards your healing coming forth. Look what it says here in Proverbs 20, 17, verse 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. A merry heart, a joyful heart, a good heart. Good, this is a joyful one here. It will be like a medicine to you. It'll be like ministering healing to your body. Don't let yourself get down, discouraged, depressed. Don't let yourself get full of sorrow. You're actually ministering death to your body instead of medicine to your body. A broken spirit will dry up the bones. Again, you can't let yourself get all sad and sorrow. Why does that happen? People looking at circumstances. Get your eyes on the Lord. Get your heart filled up with the things of God. That's what he wants. Matthew chapter 5. Boy, you can see how important your heart is. Your heart's a key for all the things that are going to happen in your life. Matthew 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, the clean in heart. They're going to be blessed. And not notice what else, for they shall see God. They're going to have the revelation of God. God is going to reveal himself to those who have a clean, pure heart. It's also going to be necessary for you to bring forth fruit. In bringing forth fruit in the parable of the sower, look what it says in Luke 8, 15. On the good ground, that's the one that produced the fruit, are they which in an honest and a good heart. Honest is an excellent kalos and a good heart. This is a heart that's good and right with God. Having heard the word, keeps it and brings forth fruit with patience or steadfastness. But you've got to have it in your heart. You've got to have a right heart. Otherwise, what happens? The devil takes it out of your heart. So with the word in your heart, that's going to be a key for you to bring forth fruit. Acts chapter 13, verse 12. Or 22, I'm sorry. Verse 22. When he'd removed him, he raised up David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart. And what else after that? Which shall fulfill all my will. Only those who have a heart after God, a man after God's heart, will fulfill the will of God. Otherwise, you won't fulfill the will of God. You'll be walking in the flesh, doing what you want, seeking after all the things you want, instead of doing the things that God wants. David was a man after God's heart, and he fulfilled all his will. And that is what God wants for you and me. Also, if you will have a heart that really loves the Lord because you're doing the Word, keeping the commandments, God will bring forth revelation of the things He has prepared for you. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, As it's written, Eye is not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Which means that if the God, for the, God has prepared these things for the guy who does love him, meaning that if you really love the Lord, then you will see, you will hear, and it will enter into your heart the things that God has prepared for you. That means you're going to love the Lord by keeping his commandments and doing the things that are pleasing his sight and keeping the words of the Lord. That's what God wants. He also, we see that if you, this principle, important to see here in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 37. This is not only for sexual sin, but it's a principle that works in all areas. It speaks of he that stands steadfast in his heart, you're steadfast on the word in your heart, having no necessity, not yielding to any of the pressures that come, he has authority, this word power is exousia, he has authority over his own will, and has so decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin, he doeth well, or he doeth excellently, this means. The principles are this. 
you've got to be steadfast in your heart. You can't be all over the place. You've got to have, you have authority over your will, so you choose the things that God wants. You can't ever say, that, well, the devil made me do it. No, you have the authority. You let him influence you, but you made the choice. And so decreed in his heart. You need to decree things and set in your heart that you're going to do what's right in the ways of the Lord. If so, you'll do well. That principle works in all ways. You won't sin. You will be blessed. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing. Remember, what does anxiety do? It overcharges your heart, weighs it down. You cannot let care worry anxiety. You cast all your cares, worries, anxieties, concerns upon the Lord. Don't have them. Don't have it for what people get all full of care, worry, anxiety, but what's going on in the nation, and what's going on in the economy, and what's going on there, all these things. Don't, they're making a mistake. You see what's going on, you pray the word, which is what God wants you to do, but you don't get all full of care, worry, anxiety over it, or you're going to be sunk. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you let your requests or legal demands be made known unto God. And then what happens? The peace of God that passes all understanding shall guard. This word keep, it means to guard, phoreo. It'll guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Otherwise, your heart's to be guarded because that's what God's looking upon. You're to have peace in your heart at all times. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. When your mind's set on him and your heart is guarded because you're praying the word. So when situations come that would cause you to react with anxiety or care or worry or concern, you cast it on the Lord and you pray the word immediately. Start praying the scriptures and then the peace of God will be there that will guard your heart and mind. And of course then you need to make sure that you're only thinking on the right things because all these means will be gates into your heart. And that's what the devil likes to get you full of anxiety, get you upset, get you worried, get you angry, get you frustrated, get you reacting to whatever situation comes your way. If that's happening in your life, he's just coming into your heart left and right. No wonder you're not getting anywhere. You've got to guard your heart and guard your mind. It is absolutely essential. What are you going to think on? You're going to think on things that are true. Think on things that are honest and are, are honorable to God. Think on things that are just, whether they're righteous. Think on things that are pure and clean and holy. Think on things that are lovely and acceptable and pleasing to God. Think on things that are of a good report. If there's any virtue or moral excellence in any praise, think on these things. Think on good things. You've got to govern your mind. This is why the devil will try to continually bring negatives to your mind. It's absolutely imperative that you take your thoughts captive and govern the area of your mind if you are going to see God bring victory in your life. Because that's how your heart's going to be guarded, and you'll have peace in your heart and mind. That means if you lose your peace in your heart and mind, ah, the devil's got in here somehow. Somehow we got off track. We got to get right back on track. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4. Let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit. This is talking about the wives. This will apply for anybody. God wants us to have meekness, right? And a quiet, calm, tranquil spirit in the sight of God of great price. Don't let anything upset you. Don't let anything get to you. Don't let anything frustrate you. We've got to conquer those things. We've got to keep our eyes on the Lord, our mind on it, and be speaking the word and praying the word and walking in the ways of the Spirit. That is a key. Now, if you have your heart right, you will see it's because you're walking right with a word in you. 1 John 3, verse 20. This will be the last scriptures. <coughs> verse 20. If our heart condemn us. Now, why would our heart condemn us? Because it's not right. It's got hardness, or it's got unforgiveness, or resentment, or it's got anxiety, or it's, you're frustrated, you know, all kinds of stuff. God's greater in their heart and knows all things. If our heart condemn us not, otherwise our heart's right. Then we have confidence toward God. You can't manufacture confidence toward God. Well, I've got to be confident toward God. You're not going to get anywhere. Confidence toward God comes from Him because your heart's right, because you've got the Word in you and you don't have any evil in your heart. 
Then it says, whatsoever we ask, is the word aiteo, a demand of what's due us. We receive, lambano, take hold of him, the promises in prayer. Why? Because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. Keeping his commandments, doing the things pleasing in his sight, that's evidence of a person whose heart is right before the Lord. He's got the word in his heart. He's doing the word. He's got the walk. Remember walking with, before him with truth having a perfect heart. We saw it throughout the Old Testament. Here we see it again. Keeping the commandments, doing the things pleasing in His sight. It's so important that you guard your heart and you do what's necessary to have a perfect heart. If you will do so, then you'll see God manifest Himself. The devil, he will work real hard to try to get you having all kinds of things. And why does anything he kind of gets to you on? Do you get easily frustrated? Do you usually get angered? Do you usually get full of care? Do you get anxious? Do you get, you know, upset about this or that? What buttons does he know how to push in your life? We're going to eliminate him. We're going to get the word in us. We're going to correct those problems. We're going to make sure we don't let the devil get us. Are we get envy? Do we get contentious? Do we get in strife? All these kind of things. See, all these things we talked about. The negatives got to be eliminated, you know. Say, well, I don't like reading all those negatives. Well, we need to see them because that's how we, everybody is in trouble. If we don't get rid of the negatives, we got to get all that worked out. When you get a perfect heart and your heart is right before God and you are praying the word and speaking the word, God is going to show himself strong on your behalf and you're going to have rest, you're going to have peace, you're going to have victory, your prayers are going to be answered, you're going to see health and wholeness, you're going to see God's blessings and prosperity in your life. Look at all those promises we looked at. It's all tied into what's in your heart. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you. I understand clearly why the heart's so important. I will guard my heart. I will have the word in my heart. I will not give place to any enemies to bring evil into my heart. I will get my heart cleansed so I have a pure heart, a clean heart, a perfect heart. And I thank you that as I have a heart that's right before you, I will do the word. I will not sin. I will be prospered. I'll be in health. I'll be blessed. You'll bring your promises to pass in my life. I understand the importance of having good things in my heart. Then I will see your blessings come upon me in all areas of my life. From this day forward, I will guard my heart. And I will make sure that I'm correcting every problem. So I have a pure, clean heart before the Lord. And I will do what the Word says. So I see the blessings of God coming upon me and all the enemies smitten and put underfoot, I will have a perfect heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, you can't do it yourself. God does it. But if you do the Word, God does it. If you don't do the Word, He can't do it. And then the devil gets to you. Don't ever let the devil get anything into your heart. <laughs>